Roncesvalles has come a long way. When I was first started in St. Vincent de Paul School and the bell rang for recess, I went home. Nobody told me it was only recess. I thought the bell meant everybody was leaving. So I, I walked home by myself at, f at five years old. I beat my mother home. I was sitting on the front porch waiting for her. What are you doing here? Just take you by the hand, walk right back to school. I thought it was time to come home. My name is Len McCauley. I'm uh, Roncesvalles Parkdale boy, I guess. Not only do I love the neighborhood, was born and raised in the neighborhood, but now I own property on Roncesvalles, retail property, and I own Pollock Home Hardware. I've owned it for 18 years, and I'm, I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to walk up all the way up to Dundas now. St. Joe's has been a very big part. Um, I have six siblings, five brothers and one sister. We were all born at St. Joseph's Hospital. I'm number six. I've got a younger brother who's spoiled rotten. <laughs> Should have been me. <laughs> Unfortunately, my father passed away in St. Joseph's Hospital from cancer. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been a big part of our, our family. All my other siblings are outside of Toronto. My sister and I are the only ones that stayed in, in the city. They all think I'm crazy, but uh, I guess when it comes to real estate value now, I think if they're not, they're thinking I'm not so crazy. But. Yeah, we lived on Fuller Avenue. It's a detached house. Today it's still in the family. Uh, my sister lives there. Two story, three bedrooms, uh, very small. Again, uh, nine people. My dad was a steam fitter, so a tradesman. Uh, my mom worked at, for over 25 years at uh, General Electric. She worked the afternoon shift from uh, 12 to 12, so 12 noon to 12 p.m. So she, with six, seven children, she would prepare the food, get everything ready, and then my dad, when he came home from work, would either heat it up or cook it or whatever, and then serve us. This, uh, this was the eating area. We used to have nine people, not this table, but at this table. My dad at the end, my mother at that end. Yeah, used to fight over the food. It was a bit crowded, you know, pot roast, potatoes, you know, the typical uh, Sunday dinner. That was our big dinner. My wife always complains right now because I eat so quickly. And the reason I eat quickly is because if you didn't eat your dinner before everybody else did, they were stealing it off your plate. So that's how it worked. You, you had to have a fork ready to pounce on somebody's fingers going for your meal. Uh, had my parents in the front room as you walked in the door. Then in the back, second floor, you walk up the stairs and we have four boys in one room. That was fun. This is now my sister's room, but we would have two double beds and four boys in this room. A one bathroom, nine people, certainly not like today. Uh, didn't get a shower installed until I was in my late teens. So baths. Of course, when we're young, you would start with the oldest boy and go down to the youngest. Because we used to have baths and they wouldn't change the water. <laughs> By the time you got midway through, the water was pretty dirty. My sister's room, because she was a girl. And this room, Used to have my two oldest brothers, two single beds. Yeah, a lot of memories. That's life with nine people in a, in a three bedroom house. When I was younger, uh, there was a hardware store in every corner, as well as a you know, corner store or a grocery store. You know, Polish delis. Uh, it was a lot of German, East, Eastern European stores. Again, used to be a corner store. A treat for us was kind of once a month we'd line up and, and my dad would give us some money, 25 cents, 15, don't really remember, but it was an amount of money that we could get a pop and a bag of chips at the corner store. So that was, you know, our monthly treat and he would be, you know, seven of us, he'd be lining up and going, oh my God, it's costing me a fortune, you know, type of thing. Uh, joking, but that was what it was like. 
we used to go to the CNE mainly with because of money being so tight. We used to go. They obviously have what's called the Labor Day Parade, which is the last day of the X. So if you're a tradesman walking, marching in the parade, you got in with your family for free. So that's how we used to go to the X. My favorite ride at the X was the Flyer. It was rocky and shaky and noisy, and that was the best ride at the CNE. We did have a couple of movie theaters in the neighborhood that we would go to. Um, the Odeon Theater is right at the end of Fuller Avenue on Queen. There was the Parkdale Theater, which was a little bit further down towards Roncesvalles on Queen again. Uh, the Review Theater on Roncesvalles and the Brighton, which is a galley in Roncesvalles. So there was a few places we could go. That was part of the neighborhood and, and part of uh, a group of us would go. So it was a lot of fun then. You know, Christmas, we, we wouldn't be without. Um, you had to share, for example, myself and my two brothers had to share a, a Mustang bike, you know, the kind that had the, the, the banana seat. So we got that one year for Christmas. And we were so excited that nobody wanted to give up the first ride. So the three of us climbed on this bike, riding up and down the laneway beside the house. That, that's what we did because nobody wanted to give up the first ride. Uh, we did have a, uh, a private drive, so we could always play hockey in the backyard, in the back lane. There was no high fences in those days. We all gathered outside and did kickball and whatever. We had lots of back lanes to explore, and when the lights came on, you went home. You had to make sure that you were home when the street lights came on. Uh, this is St. Vincent de Paul Church. Uh, baptized here, all my f siblings were baptized here. Uh, I was an altar boy for a good 10, 11 years at this church. Was married there. It was part of us, part of our family was the church. The organ, uh, when I went to my, my friend's uh, father's funeral before Christmas there, they played the organ. It, was, uh, it brings back lots of memories. Uh, being part of the choir, and uh, going to St. Vincent de Paul School. So in behind St. Vincent de Paul Church is St. Vincent de Paul School, which we attended as, as kids. Memories of the boys and girls' separate entrances, uh, not being able to play in the playground together. They had them separated by a white line. And the nuns, uh, early on, the nuns or the teachers would keep a close eye to make sure there was no mixing between the two. I mean, I could never figure that out because you mixed in the classroom, but anyways, they, they didn't allow it. Corporal punishment was divvied out uh, freely in those days. They weren't afraid to give you a smack. I, I remember a teacher, Mrs. Dimes, she was in her 60s. And she had arthritis in her hands, so her knuckles would protrude. And she would, come, if you were doing something wrong in the classroom, she would come up behind you and wrap you in the ear with her knuckles. And believe me, that hurt. And you wouldn't do it again. The one guy, he, he was, he was pretty. They, he wouldn't just throw chalk at you when you were talking. He would walk up and flip you off your desk. You wouldn't think it would happen, but it did. Uh, but then again, you get great teachers, so it's, you get uh, more good than bad. That was just the way it was. You know, you, you, would, you would get in trouble at school, but you would never go home and tell your parents because you would get in trouble again. My high school years were in uh, Western Tech. Starting in grade 10 at Western Tech in those days, they had a, a major for electrical. So 10, 11, and 12, I, I majored in it. Graduating from high school, getting a job, doing my five-year apprenticeship training, got a master's license, which means I could become a contractor. And I did that for almost 20 years until the opportunity came about to purchase the store in Roncesvalles, Pollock's Home Hardware. It was actually my neighbor across the street from me that was selling it for John Wackula, the previous owner. And uh, next thing I knew, uh, I had a business partner, a, a friend of mine, and we bought the realty as well as the store. And that was uh, 18, over 18 years ago now. I've been part of the board of the BIA since I bought the store. So 18 years I volunteered on the BIA. So, and right now I'm the chair for the last two years. We only have retail on one side. Uh, the west side is, is, is zoned as commercial. 
It's all offices, doctors, dentists, lawyers, that type of thing. So there's no retail on the on the majority of um, of the west side of Roncesvalles. That's what makes this street so special. Yeah, Roncesvalles is like a village. I can get groceries, I can get hardware, I can get clothing, I get lots of restaurants to choose from. It's a great uh, neighborhood for anything that you need. It, it really is an awesome uh, street and, that's, and in this neighborhood reflects that. Well, when I was younger, coming from such a large family and not having a lot of money, um, you made your own fun. I had a friend on Roncesvalles that his dad was a um, x-ray technician and we'd go to his house and stare at the machines, you know. That's part of the experience of being a child in, in the 60s and 70s on Roncesvalles.